from Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Braddock Defence Systems is developing a high-speed, long-range mobile deployment unmanned aerial vehicle for surveillance of an attack mission augmentation in collaboration with Marenko Engineering Technologies Africa. Anine Vermeulen has the story. Braddock Defence Systems CEO Adam McCallum says that the Lockwing drone was originally going to be a quadrocopter. However, while conducting research for the project, Braddock contacted Marenko Engineering as they are experts in this field, and the idea of a Lockwing drone came to fruition. The drone would be a field deployable capability um, deployed by the forces. It would then hover over or, or, or loiter over that target, provide live surveillance feeds, to the, uh, to the required decision makers and then our uh, sniping forces could neutralize that target by dropping ordnance from the vehicle. The first prototype of the drone recently completed a full autonomous mission with a camera. The second prototype, which will be completed this year, will be one six scale model. Essentially our mandate was to develop a vehicle that could have a vertical takeoff and landing capability which could be field deployable and could support um, clandestine or or undercover forces that were operating within the field of operations of Africa. So this is purely a, an African engineered device to, to, to help with an African solution to African problems. Other news making headlines this week. Gauteng's Aerotropolis master plan is to get underway soon. Nissan is to revive the Datsun brand in South Africa and the e-tolling delay holds up additional freeway projects. The development of a master plan for the Aerotropolis concept around South Africa's busiest airport is set to get underway following the appointment of Gauteng Management Agency CEO Jack van der Merwe to manage the process, says Gauteng Premier Nomvule Mokonyane. Work on the development of the Aerotropolis centered at OR Tambo International Airport seeks to leverage public and private sector investment at the airport and the surrounding areas. The OR Tambo International Airport, which is Africa's busiest airport, is a fitting location as Gauteng, South Africa and Africa's first erotropolis. We have appointed Mr. Jack van der Merve, who successfully oversaw the development of the innovative Gauteng to lead this particular initiative. Nissan South Africa has announced that the Datsun brand is set to return to South Africa with its first model, priced at under 100,000 Rand, to be launched by the end of 2014. Now, we've relaunched Datsun and announced it a year ago, focusing and starting with India, Indonesia and Russia, because you see this phenomenon in those three countries. N now that we have a fairly good gr grab at what Datsun cars would look like, we have settled on the design, the development, and a number of other aspects. The natural next country, I would say, is South Africa. Delays caused by public opposition to the implementation of e-tolling are a great concern to the South African National Roads Agency Limited, with the agency experiencing a loss in revenue, which has led to the rollout of other planned phases of the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project being placed on hold, says GFIP manager Alex van Niekerk. If one look at Gauteng and the situation we had with traffic in Gauteng, um, then certainly we need to find a financing model to implement upgraded infrastructure and also new infrastructure. So it's very important if one look at sustainable growth that we have that financing models in place and therefore I think the user of that um, infrastructure that also receives the benefit of using that infrastructure should contribute towards uh, the implementation cost and the financing cost of, of that infrastructure. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insight into South Africa's real economy.